Hi everyone, Pame Motorashpur here with, as a guest, Kyle Smith. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. What about you? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, starting the new adventure for me, the IDM Championship. After an injury that ruled, ruled you out also uh, out of 2023 season, how does it feel to be back after such a break? Yeah, it's exciting, you know. Um, yeah, I didn't race last year. I uh, broke my ankle before the season started and um, didn't really have any offers, to be honest. So... I thought it'd be a good excuse to not look for anything because I didn't really know what I wanted to do anyway. So because I got injured, I thought right, I'll sit it out and maybe standing for an injured rider or whatever. Never really happened. And then I got a phone call this year to, um, to race the IDM Championship. So here we are. Have you set yourself a goal for 2024 season? Well, um, goal is obviously always uh, you know, it's to win. Um, but I know like national championships are always really strong. Coming from the world championship, you'd think you come to a national championship and you want to win, but I know through past experience, go to British championship, the, the Spanish championship, and now at the IDM championship, doesn't matter where you go, always like the top three, four riders are always going to be fast. Um, you know, they got good teams, you know, the tracks really well. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to try our best and that's the goal obviously be, be on top what was the thing you were missing the most of racing um the, missing from last year when i didn't race from, ra from racing um, yeah last year racing in general like uh just the feel of racing um saying that i did like a few motocross races and stuff um you know i, I can't be sat at home doing nothing and now i've got two kids what they're racing so I do heaps of stuff with them but um but yeah, I'll, I'll always, I guess I'll always race, even if you get older and retire at like a professional level, I'll still race mountain bikes or do compete in something because uh, it's, just what it's, uh, it's fun, you know, it's funny, it's what keeps you alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does a re yeah, it, yeah it, there's a lot of risk and we know that it's not all, it's not all flowers, let's say, it's not like, it's not like the, the, best in Chinese uh, uh, world, let's say, even, especially when you get to this level, but and we know, and you know that by experience, you had some setbacks also, but uh, still motorcycle racing is one of those sports that give you like excitement and uh, adrenaline, like a few others. And Kyle, you were in motorcycle racing also at very high levels in the last in the past years. You were racing in uh, Moto2, you were racing in World Super Sport, um, but let's start from the very beginning of your career. Yeah. How did it start? Um, I started, uh, both my parents like bikes and um, li born in England, uh, lived in England till I was seven and um, we did a season of school by motocross in England. Then we moved to Spain, nothing to do with bikes just because it's sunny and warm and the food's good. Uh, and our family moved to Spain and then I carried on racing motocross up until I was 16. I think it's 16. It's the age you need you move from the 85s to the 254 strokes because then it was like changed from 125 to 254 strokes and the 125s are just ruled out. So now we're just too small. Uh, too small to jump up onto the on the 254 strokes. So we gave road racing a try and it took off um just did really well and then started like with 125 in team aspa and then it just carried on to that doing spanish championship and then moved on to world motor 2 then from there to super sport and here i am you were in spanish championship and uh, i think you were in stock extreme right yeah and uh, then from there you moved to moto 2 yeah in 2013 you were racing in moto 2 world championship uh, you were with Avintia, if I remember yeah. correctly, with Avintia. But yeah. uh, can you tell more about that? Yeah, well, you know, they say sport in general is uh, difficult. I think like everybody at home, not everybody, but there's a lot of people at home what look at musicians. I think they've got the same deal. Look at musicians, look at athletes, and they think it's once you make it, as in like a, a professional career, then you've made it. And it's not like that. Like getting to be professional mm. is very hard. Yeah. It's the easy part. Once you once you make it to be able to race in the world championship, that's when it starts getting difficult where 
sponsors are involved. There's lots more money involved. Um, and to be at the top of your game, you need to be at the top of the game because there's, you know, there's lots of fast riders, there's lots of sponsors. It's just, it just gets hard. And yeah. basically, we had a sponsor in the Moto2 team what ended up disappearing, so the team ran out of money. That was that for the season, and they're asking me for to, to bring budget in, and we don't have anything. Um, because you know, the, the money speak about it's not like doing school by motocross, it's you know, it's like hundreds and hundreds of thousands of euros, yeah. Um, which it's it's that's to do with like big companies, big sponsors. Um, so yeah, it just never we, we couldn't finish the season, um, which were a bummer because uh, I was like unexperienced. Um, I started racing road racing when I was like, like I said, like 16, and I did a couple of years and a couple of years in stock thousand now straight into world motor two what's well, like it's one of the most competitive categories there is yeah you, um, were, you were like uh how, how old were you back then 21 22 something like that something like that went to yeah. when you went to moto two yeah you know there's younger riders there but then i started road racing when i was a little bit older because i'd always race motocross um that was that but it's a shame not finished the championship but it it is what it is. Um, and saying that, I got uh, other offers. Um, went to stock six hundred. Yes, yeah, because um, then you moved to super stock six hundred, and it was a good move, eh, I would say. It come out of the blue, really. Um, a friend who helped me when I was racing motocross was speaking to Jerry Bryce, who was running the Honda team. Race days. Yeah, race days. Um, he was running the Junior Cup and the 150 Cup for in motocross for Honda. Okay. And they was looking for a motocross rider and Paco Rico, a guy who helped me out. Um, he was speaking with Jerry and then, I don't know how it come across, but they, were, they needed a rider for a stock six bike and my name got mentioned. Uh, and I turned up and won. So... Yeah. So that was good, yeah. Well, I finished uh, for the first round following Nürburgring. Um, I can't remember where I finished, but I did pretty pretty well. And then the second round was Jerez um, for race days, and, and we won that race. Yeah. And me and Jerry got on really well, so he set up a team in in Stock 1000 on, on a Honda as well. And we did really good because the Honda wasn't the most competitive bike back then. But... Um, but we did like really good that season. Um, you know, put a good fight against the Ducatis and the Cowards, which were a lot stronger, and um, finished on the podium heaps of times. And uh, yeah. 2014, you were in Superstar 1000, and the season and the, and the season went well. Yeah, you can say. And then you moved to Supersport. Yeah. Well, the f off of the back of the results, what I got in 2014 on the Stock 1000, um, I managed to get a ride for Tenkati Honda um, in Supersport. Which that was like uh, really cool because it's you know yeah. Tenkate Honda is the number one team, um, and yeah, but I got it off of the results what we got in in 2014 on the stock thousand, and that year went pretty well. Um, made a few mistakes, so I'll kick myself uh, the rest of my life in that season, but we won. A race. I won in Qatar. Oh, in Qatar, that's yeah. true, Qatar. I won in Qatar and then I finished third in Assen. I finished third, yeah. Yeah, behind because it was um, uh, Jules Cousel and uh, Keenan Safogu. They were battling and I was just like falling. Um, and uh, and yeah, but I had a, a few I had a podium in Aragon as well. I had a, a few podiums. Yeah, they did, they did a, a few job. a few crashes, which like bummed about, but yeah, it is what it is. So you still did a good job, and then you stayed in a super sport uh, world championship in the following years. Yeah, but the results sometimes were coming, sometimes they were not. Yeah, um, and yeah, I moved to uh, we signed Bookmaster to PTR. PTR in yeah, 2016. Um, yeah, in 2016 it was the weirdest because I was really fast. Um, got good results but for some reason i always get good starts and 
for some reason that bike that year i could not get off the line um i can remember in the first round in in phillip island yeah uh fried the clutch off the start just uh you know, fast all weekend off the start it just fried and then i made it till turn four and the bike it just wouldn't go like the clutch was slipping um so i had to retire for that race and that was that back then there were only one race a weekend um so that was that race over and heats of other races i just for some reason i just couldn't gel with the clutch so i might never had the same issue with any of the bikes um and i'd sometimes like come off the start i'd qualify say six and start drop back to say like 20th mm. and then fight my way through get fastest lap of the race um and end up like fifth or fourth every single race it seemed like that happened um and that year i won the fastest lap championship where you get for, from Pirelli um, and I was really fast but I just couldn't get the thing off the line which that's one of them because that year if I just getting the thing off the line I could have been like top three in the championship which would have been really cool but yeah, 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 well, yeah so, it, was a, it was a very difficult was a very difficult year yeah but still you could you still could be in front yeah so but I still I won that year I won two Saying that, I couldn't get the thing off the line. I still won a couple of races because I won um, the last round in Qatar as well. Uh, that round I won in Assen. Yeah, that, yeah, that year you won in Assen. Yeah. yeah, that year I won in Assen. Um, then I finished on the podium a couple more times as well. So well, there, there's about if I could get the thing off the line pretty much. And then in the bunch of other races, what? Well, I could have been top three. Yeah, <laughs> from the back. And then uh, you stayed also. Uh, you stayed still in World Super Sport. You yeah. moved to uh, to Lorini. Also, you were racing with Lorini. Yep. It mm -hmm. was 2017 and 2018, if I'm not mistaken. First half of 2018, then you moved back to PTR. Yep. Yeah. Well, that that team, uh, same. I got on with the team really well, but there were some issues with budget as well. So, mm. um, ended up racing one year and struggling um and then the following year raced half of the year and struggled we had loads of mechanical issues and then simon bookmaster from ptr asked me to come back so then i moved back to ptr and finished on the podium in forty mount yeah finished second well i, I finished second but and then Months after they said no, no, it was the third because there was some weird thing with the red flag. The red flag, Luca Mejias was out of the race, but and then they decided to red flag it, so Mejias decided to ride his broken bike back to the pits. Yeah, and I've got the second place podium at home. Um, I was on, I've got the photo second place, but and then the years after the, the points, the it was a years after months after they changed the points so it like was actually third so i think if you look on the on the paperwork it says it was third mm. for me it was second a second yeah but well, still <laughs> yeah, was the podium it, yeah, yeah, yeah and then and then you had another season in uh, super, uh, super sport uh, uh, with Pellicini, and then you were racing again and again and you were yeah and then super sport. cia landlords the uh, simon lost the sponsor i didn't have a ride for that year and after the first round, I think it was, uh, I got a phone call. After the first round, which is Philip Island, I got a phone call from Pedicini. Pedicini, yeah. To, to race Kawasaki in the, what was then was a European Championship, which is pretty much super sport, the same, except from they don't go to the flyaways, which is Qatar, um, Thailand and Australia, I think, back then. Yeah, and uh, how was it? Um, difficult. Yeah, same. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know, like struggle with the bike, uh, heaps of mechanicals. I just broke down every race, and then you've got a uh, engine quantity, so you can only use I think six engines a year, or six or I think it's six in super sport, but because it was a European super sport, you had five or four. I, I can't remember. So, so you went above the that quantity. Of yeah, engines. yeah, because um, I can remember one weekend we went through three engines. It, they just blew up gearboxes had issues um three engines broke during the same weekend yeah wow yeah <laughs> so um, so yeah uh, straight away we 
out the engine then because you have to start from pit lane if you mm -hmm. um, use more engines than what you need so it was just a season of that although saying that i actually won the european championship yes you yeah did. but it wasn't that many riders racing the european championship i wanted to compete against the guys who were racing the, um, the world championship um but all in all i got yeah. a trophy for it in 2020 i raced the spanish championship you were in spanish championship yep. true and then in 2021 you went to british championship with, yep. tri with, a, with a triumph, triumph of, from new generation of super sport bikes yep. let's say and how was it you also really? you also were kind of develop developing the bike yeah it, I, I had a blast like well i had a blast until i blasted myself because i ended up getting injured and couldn't finish the season um but yeah we're completely developing the bike because it's that bike starts off as a as like a high high bar no fairing uh, like, mm. like naked bike um yeah street triple like street dribble so it's a complete street bike mm. um to make it a race bike you put the clip-ons on you put your rear sets of footrest you put the the fairings um and then it's because it's a complete new bike you have to do stuff like gearing suspension links lengths of swing arms and just find the ballpark of where the bikes work mm. and um and doing that i did like really well i got uh broke my collarbone just before the season started made round one only just because i broke it like the the week before um testing in knock hill made round one but I, I couldn't hardly ride it was like super painful um and plus it was at alton park which is like a it's a proper british track <laughs> mm. um so i struggled at alton park but scrapped that because i was sort of injured next round was knock hill and led the whole race until i crashed in the last lap um which were an absolute bummer um yeah. but and then we finished on the podium heaps of races won a few races and then injured myself uh pretty bad in silverstone mid-season um broke pelvis sacro collarbone again uh arm foot all in one crash wow and it wasn't a big crash it was just like a, it were a high side but i don't know it just i just landed super hard and that was the season over for me um so i couldn't finish the season we finished the season yeah. then you were then you were supposed to go to world championship yeah in uh, 2022 maybe with them but there was no chance yeah well in the contract it was if i won the championship uh would renew the contract to go to to world to world them. championship yeah um, but even if i had i don't think i could have because the same it's always a financial thing the teams don't yeah. have the money the factories don't support the teams as much as i think they should but i don't know it's not what they sell they don't sell race bikes no more they sell scooters and yeah. <laughs> electric <laughs> stuff exactly. and yeah so so yeah that was that and they have to find you know riders what bringing sponsors and stuff which i never have never had yeah but you still found a seat in the uh, world super sport that year but yeah it was just a different different bike and different team yeah yeah it was a so, yamaha we had bft with yamaha yeah but it was a bit highs and lows wasn't it that that year were highs and lows yeah more lows and highs yeah there were one high because i got on the podium in Nesteril, hmm. finished second, but didn't gel with the team. Nice guys, but didn't gel with the team. Didn't gel with the uh, the suspension setup, um, the electronics as well. Um, and I just didn't ever feel comfortable on the bike. And, and I know it's a Yamaha, and you should, but you get it out of the box and they run fine, but. I don't know, at World Super Sport, there's so much with electronics and engine brakings and throttle responses and stuff, which um, if you just don't gel with a, with a data guy and stuff, it's sometimes hard. Because it wasn't working, I was just not getting the results. Because I wasn't getting the results, then I started getting down psychologically um, mm. that year. And then sometimes you don't know if it's you, if it's the bike or what. Um, which happened to me in the past with on the Honda and then I went back to PTR and ended up on the podium. So, so because of that experience, I sort of knew that 
are capable, you know, you don't, you don't lose the speed. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you have worse races, you can get down psychologically, but you don't, the, the speed, if your speed's there, it's always going to be there. Um, you can have worse races and better races, but you don't always go from being, you know, top three guy to top 20 guy. You no. Know? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, if, and if you are, like, if you do go down, down to the top 20 guys, use a good vision. Look at, look at Matt Marquez. Mm. Um, he's the best in the world and on the Honda, it was struggling and then he's gone now back to the Ducati and, and he's is, back in the front. And he's back in the front. He's back where he needs to be. You know, it's me who goes back to the hotel at night and sits and thinks and think, ah, oh, it's me. It's because I've done this and that. And mm. you're, you're the first to blame yourself. You might not say it in public, but at the end of the day, you do and it, it where wears you down. So that was that. And then we ended up sort of giving in with the team and we come to a mutual agreement that it wasn't working. Well, we wasn't getting the results. Yeah. And we wasn't enjoying it either because of the results. So we just stopped. And I did. And I got a phone call from Pedicini that they were at a ride. And I knew that the Pedicini bike was not competitive because the same, they're struggling with budget. Um, yeah. And then super bike and they're like running stock engines because they don't have the budget to run like factory engines um and all these things but i thought you know what if i go and get a point then nobody would be who has been on the bike has got a point yet and i thought hey, it's just a little goal for myself go ride a super bike which is cool and plus it was the last two races we shot australia and uh indonesia, indonesia. i thought i'll go just have a blast the team are really cool i get along with like Lucio and stuff really well. And um, if I get a point for me, it'd be like winning. And I went, and you know what? I got a point. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so, yes, you did. And I think, and I think there, was a time, there was a moment where you were even like uh, much higher than... Yeah, there point, I, point. I, there were one point I was leading the race. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Uh, FP1 in Indonesia. Um, the track were dusty. It were like not ideal. And I finished top 10. I think I finished 10th mm. in... My first ever FP1 in World Superbike, like, yeah, this is cool. And then and then it got harder on from there. The track cleaned up and people started getting faster. But yeah, and uh, Philip Island had some weather issues. And uh, when it gets tough, I always like it. People chicken out and when you're going to man up. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, yeah, but it, yes, it was an incredible way to end the season. Yeah, and yeah. also showing again that the, the talent and the skills are there. So, yeah, but in the end, uh, let's say that your career so far has been pretty much highs and lows and weekends. Yeah. And especially your experience, you can tell about a little bit the dark side of racing that no, not everybody knows and not everybody... And, and you cannot see normally on TV. Can you, can you tell about the main aspects? Yeah. No, just... Like I say, everybody thinks it's uh, you're a professional athlete and it's uh, earning money to ride bikes, which it's not all like that. You've got the injuries, you've got anything what brings highs, uh, yeah. like winning a race, brings lows. And the lows are sometimes more than the highs. They're usually more frequent than the highs, but... Mm -hmm. It's worth the price because the highs are very high. Um, you know, yeah. when you win a race, that feeling is is unbelievable. But to win a race, you need to lose three or four races or or more. And yeah, it's it's not easy. And and then, like I say, like this, this sport as well, it's financially it's difficult, and it gets because you got your top MotoGP riders, then you've got your club races. What well, obviously pay to do it as a hobby, and well, then you got like the professional side of it what's not the guys who are right at the top end mm. what it's like really difficult to just keep your head above surface you, you need to train and approach it like a full professional so it takes up a lot of time traveling injuries uh, training it takes up like 100% of your time more than a day job um, mm. and if you don't train and don't do everything like you should there's no point coming because you're not going to be uh, at the front. Yeah. So it's always like it's just a balance of of the ups and downs, and is it worth it? Is it not? Um, just to keep keep afloat. Sometimes you can be in the, you can be in the front, but sometimes you can be much that much more down in yeah. the in the standings. And um, 
Yeah, uh, and in that in that case, uh, it's also likely that people may forget about you. Yeah, because there's one saying it well all right say it's, you're only as good as your last race yeah and that's pretty true um you know obviously it's true to an extent because if you <laughs> win every race and you're crashing your last one but um yeah the, you, you get forgot about quick um because there's lots of you know new up-and-coming fast riders so yeah as soon as you don't perform just as well through through whatever, either through yourself or through mechanical issues or whatever. Um, yeah, it's just difficult to carry on. It's difficult to carry on, uh, but we can say, okay, you did it, you, you did it, and you've been doing that in motorcycle racing for many years, and also outside motorcycle racing, right? Uh, outside your racing, your racing, yeah. Let's say that uh, you have you have family, you have kids, yep. also. And uh, what can you say also about your life outside? motorcycle racing life is full gas outside motorcycle racing um so usually like in amongst races i usually work with mum and dad they've got they do like small reforms and, and building and stuff so when you're not getting the money from racing because most of the money is through for me it's been bonus money so like you got a podium and win and a win stuff then that'll pay for you in the next races but if you're finishing fifth or sixth you don't get anything for that um so say so come home and do some a little bit of work um and then now got kids they're racing bmx and they're racing mountain biking and they're wow. racing motocross they've got, they've got everything going on um and and now as well I'm moving into coaching a little bit, so that's another thing. And I'm actually helping a guy, Lucas Brown. He races um, the British Talent Cup, and uh, he just won last race. Actually. Oh, then you, so, can, you can be very proud of it. Yeah. yeah, damn right, really proud of him. Yeah. <laughs> um. So so yeah, and looking to to move into that little world a little bit. Um. So yeah, be good to pack us. Like you said, I'm. A lot of experience, good things, bad things, work with lots of people. And I've learned a lot throughout my career. And you can and teach also to Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, for me, I've never had... Like, my parents were into bikes, but they never knew anything about racing. Um, and everything sort of... I had to find out the... Say the hard way, it was just trial and error um, of finding out which... Trying to like either crashing or winning, um, and I've learned a lot throughout my career, so it'd be good to be able to pass that information on and help younger riders. Yeah, yeah. and you also have your kids, and then kids as well. Yeah, they're like I say, racing BMX and motocross and whatever. Yeah. What's the main advice that you but, give uh, to give to them and also to uh, Lucas Brown? Oh, always main advice is to keep it fun. Everybody says that, but. Um, like I say, you, everybody from the outside thinks that once you've made it in like the professional business, it's you, you've made it. Uh, no, it's when it really starts getting hard. And I see lots of younger kids what really take it so serious um, and never achieve it. Mm. So, so you, you, you've got to put the time and effort in but keep it fun because if not you'll just not enjoy it or you'll stress yourself out for it to maybe happen that you become professional you know you make the break to a world championship world yeah. for it then to become serious and then that's when you've got more pressure that's when you've got to really work harder than you you've worked as a young kid um so so yeah just keep it fun in conclusion i would like to ask you What's your goal for uh, for your future for for the next years of your racing career? Um, Starting from uh, okay from this year, okay, we would like to be on top, yeah. Uh, but is there any is there anything that you would still like to achieve? I don't know. Good question. Um, definitely like to win another championship because I've not done really good at championships. I've won races and I've won races at high levels, um, like world championship of, and I've won them fair and square, like. It's, I've had some wins where it's been wet and stuff, but I've 
beaten like Keenan Sfoglu man to man in a dry race, mm -hmm. which is, you know, I'm super proud of myself and it's really good. But throughout a championship, I always um, have too many ups and downs. Um, therefore, for a championship, it's just not, not good enough. So, yeah, hopefully, we'll see this year. Hopefully, this year. <laughs> I might I'm, I'm achieve my goal this year. We'll try anyway. Yeah. You'll, try, you'll try, you'll try hard as you try as you tried pretty hard during your, your whole career so far yeah, in, uh, to succeed and you managed to win many races, you man managed to be many times on the podium, you yeah. managed to show that you had the skills, and it didn't go always well but you're still around, you're still racing uh, despite everything, it's good to have you back this year yeah. in German Championship and let's see how it goes, in any case I wish you good luck for this year and for the for all the remaining seasons of your career and keep pushing hard yeah. as you've done so far. Yeah, thank you. Wishing you the best Kyle and thank you so much for this interview. No bros, I'll do. Right, go on. Ciao. Ciao.